Hello and welcome. My name is Jen Moritz and I'm a crew consultant on the Families for Inclusive Education project. This project is proudly supported by the Queensland Government through the Department of Education. This short online session is called Inclusive Education, Having a Vision for Inclusion and it has been designed for families who have a son or daughter with disability. Who is CREW? CREW or Community Resource Unit exists to support the development of leadership and authentic change, which enhances the lives and possibilities for people with disabilities to belong to and to participate in community life. CREW aims to challenge ideas and practices which limit the lives of people with disabilities and to inspire and encourage individuals and organisations to pursue better lives for people with disabilities. In this short online session, we will look at what it means to have a vision for an inclusive life. We will touch on how to begin to craft a vision and how to use your vision. We will look at inclusive education, what it is and why it is so important. We will look at policies and legislation and some further information and resources to help you stay connected and keep learning. At most of our crew workshops, we begin the session by asking the question to all, what is a good life? And more specifically, what makes a good life for them? Often people say a good life includes the following things, good health, a home, friendships, lifelong learning, freedom, family, fun, spontaneity, meaningful work, some spirituality, financial security, passions and interests, a sense of belonging. Are there any other things that you can think of that you could add to this list? For many people with disability, it is often difficult to achieve all of these things as there are other barriers in the way for them to be able to be included and to feel a true sense of belonging. The default path is often one of segregation. And if families want something different, then it is helpful for families to do the work of vision creation. Jeremy Ward, a family member, once said, to craft the good life, we need to do the hard work on clarifying and sustaining our vision of what we want not what others tell us are the limits of what is possible. If we try to choose in a vacuum, not knowing what it is we really want, then others will choose for us. Crew is encouraging families to lead with their vision of a positive life. And with that is a focus on gifts and contributions. A quote from Burton Black, some stories enhance life, others degrade it. So we must be careful about the stories we tell, about the ways we define ourselves and other people. Another family member on the Families for Inclusive Education team, Lindy Brengman, has put together a short video on our website titled The Power of a Positive Introduction, where there she outlines the way that she began to introduce her daughter Millie through her gifts and her contributions and how this then began to shape the way Millie was included in community life. So let's get to now, what is a vision and why it is so important? A vision is a dream or a hope of an imagined future, the good life as we spoke of before. It's the thoughts that come into your mind when your child is young the thoughts that are pure and rich. A clear vision works as a compass to keep you on track. It helps you to stay focused and it can help you to take, it can help to take you closer or further away from your goals and dreams. Therefore, taking some time to craft that vision and making it clear can help you to get where you want to go. A vision can encourage us to aim high, to be active in pursuing that dream. A vision allows us to act out of hope 
and not fear. A vision can also provide a picture that can motivate us and enthuse others. Without a vision, it is easy to be led in another direction by friends, family, doctors, therapists, teachers and school administration. For example, if you have a particular kindergarten in mind when enrolling your son or daughter, you might really love the idea of them attending their local kindergarten with children of similar age. However, friends or family might not think that's the right thing. They might see that um, your child might not be ready. So it's simple things like that that make it really easy to be influenced by other people's thinking. Crafting a positive vision, however, is about thinking about what it is that you would like to see. It's not that others mean any particular harm by this, but they may not be well informed about the research and evidence that supports inclusion. So how does one begin to craft a vision? Well, firstly, I think it takes some time. So to find the headspace to dream and clarify what it is you want, take some time out with your family. Having a framework like the good life that we spoke about in the beginning or one of valued roles is one way to sort of shift your thinking into the positive. Starting with the person is the best place to begin. Think about your son or daughter. What is it that they really enjoy? What is it that lights them up? What really gets them excited about life? Have a think about those things and start to tease them out. Write them down. Believing that such a life is possible, well, really, that is the place to begin. Thinking that an inclusive life can actually happen is the first step to making this all come together. Thinking typical and ordinary. What is it that... Um, your siblings did at a similar age to your son or daughter? What is it that other peers at school are doing at this current time? Thinking in the typical and ordinary helps to set the scene and helps to keep you on the right track. Keeping expectations high. If you're able to keep in your mind what it is that you would really like to see, then keep that in your mind's eye. Invite trusted others into to share the journey with you. This is so crucial. By bringing others in and sharing stories of what, what a positive life looks like for your son or daughter, brings people with you so that they can support you along the way. They can hold your vision alongside you. And write it down. Writing down your vision starts to make it more clarified. You can read it to other people. You can share it at your, at your child's school. It's another way of keeping that vision alive. After taking some time to think and to clarify what's important to you, your child and your family, you can begin to capture your vision. By writing it down, you've actually started to craft what we call a positive vision statement. A positive vision statement could be shared with different people. For example, um, you might like to share that with your immediate family to bring them on board with ideas that you have for your child's future. You could also share your positive vision statement with any allied health professionals that are involved in your child's life, um, any other professionals. And more importantly, um, it's a good resource to share with teachers and support staff at your child's school. One example where families have used a positive vision statement is where they give their child's new teacher at the beginning of the year a small one-page document with those things outlined on them. This way um, you can convey quite a lot of information uh, in, one, in one go. Families have found this is a great way to set their child up for success for the school year. My colleague at Crew, Lisa Bridal, is more than happy to share her vision statement for her son Sean. Now this vision statement didn't come like this fully formed it came out of a time when Sean was in primary school 
And Lisa found that things weren't um, traveling along as easily as they possibly could have been. So Lisa and her family put some time into thinking about what a positive vision might look like for Sean and his whole of life. The family crafted this statement, which they used um, with teachers and other people in Sean's life at that time. We want Sean to be a valued and contributing member of the school community and for him to experience the full life of the school. We want Sean to be included and to be able to participate fully in the classroom, playground and in all school events. We want him to be welcomed and appreciated for his gifts and contributions. And we want him to be challenged to learn in order to keep developing to his full potential. So you can see that a lot of time, energy and love has gone into this vision statement for Sean's life. I know that this vision statement has been a positive tool for Lisa and her family in seeing that Sean does indeed have an inclusive life. Nowadays, Sean has um, two jobs that he really enjoys. He's living in a unit with his housemate and he has a lot of friendships and relationships around him. But that didn't come without lots of thinking and lots of um, behind the scenes effort in order for Sean to have this rich life that he has now. So let's have a look now at another kind of positive vision statement. This is Ella's family vision statement for the purpose of sharing at her school with her teachers. So Ella, here is Ella Pitchard. She is outspoken, strong and brave. Here I will read Ella's vision statement to you. We believe Ella will live a life of purpose filled with rich experiences. We envision our daughter in relationships that are genuine and meaningful. We see her gaining employment in the areas of her strengths and interests. Our expectations and hopes for her future are the same as for our son, to be content in what they choose to do and accepted for who they are. So you can see here that Deb and her husband have included a little bit about Ella, her vision state, their vision statement for Ella, and they've included some other information about her strengths. She's social, resilient, she's a problem solver. They've included a bit of information about what works for her and what doesn't at home and at school. And they've also included some things she loves, her interests, her passions, and some things she's working on. So coupled with Ella's vision statement, you can see here that this is a really easy way to capture quite a lot of information. It's only a simple one page document and it's a really positive strength, strength based way to share a little bit of that um, positive introduction of who Ella is, what she loves and what she has to contribute to her school community and the wider community too. So to come to a close now on vision, there really is no right or wrong way about going about crafting a positive vision for an inclusive life for your son or daughter. Take some time to think about what is most important to your family and what is most important to you. Think about all the things that light, light up your child's life. Think about um, the things that really get them going and the things that they really enjoy. Allow yourself to dream big and really go there in your imagination. Sometimes it can be really difficult to think, to think so big, but give yourself permission and think about some of those things that you really, um, that you really hope for and that you have dreams about seeing into the future. Bring in people who support you and support your vision for an inclusive education. These people will be really important allies to you going forward and they're the kind of people that you can bounce ideas off um, and you can really um, share with them your wildest dreams. It's really important to have those people in your life. So what is an inclusive education? If we're thinking about a positive vision for an inclusive life, then the local school in our local community is really where our sons and daughters have the right to be. Inclusive education is a human right. It is based on evidence, it is supported by law, it is best for all children, 
and it's best for everyone. So we're talking about the time our children are learning and growing through early childhood and early education like kindergarten through from primary school and into secondary school and beyond. So inclusive education means that all students attend and are welcomed by their neighbourhood schools in age appropriate regular classes and are supported to learn, contribute and participate in all aspects of the life of the school. So we're, we're really talking here about physical inclusion, having access to all parts of the school grounds. We're talking about social inclusion, being involved in extracurricular activities, being able to make friendships across the school. And we're talking about curriculum inclusion. So that's about making reasonable adjustments so that students with a disability can learn alongside their peers. So why inclusion? Well, we know that for students with disability, that they actually achieve their best academic and social outcomes. And that's not just for students with a disability, but that's actually for all students when learning together. We know that there are better long-term outcomes for employment, in independence and social belonging. We know that the school community learns to value diversity and how to accommodate difference. Children grow up at the same schools as their brothers and sisters and neighbourhood friends. Teachers in inclusive classrooms become more effective teachers and learn skills for partnering with parents. Overall, we know that inclusion is a foundation for inclusive societies and communities. Inclusive education will set your child up for the journey ahead. Many families choose inclusive education because it does set their child up on an ordinary and typical path that exposes them to the typical life experiences on offer. It naturally presents them the variety of opportunities in life that many of us take for granted, like further study, relationships, choosing a career based on their interests, and choosing where they want to live and who they want to live with. It's not to say that people who don't follow this pathway cannot have relationships, job and a home. What we're saying is that if you have a vision of what an inclusive life looks for your son or daughter, then it is highly likely that, that inclusive education will assist in making this a reality. So what does inclusive education look like? We're talking about all students learning together alongside their peers, doing age appropriate learning activities that enhance and enrich their lives. We're not talking here about students being supported in a separate location. We're not talking about students being supported who all have a similar disability. We're talking about students with a disability learning alongside their peers in the classroom and doing the same work that other students are doing. Crew believes that when students are learning alongside their peers in the same classroom, there are more opportunities available to them throughout the school. So we're not just talking about opportunities available in the classroom, but we're also talking about opportunities that arise when students are able to make friendships with other students, when students are able to take up opportunities within the school. To clarify a little further, we're talking about inclusive education as a human right. So if you'd like to find out some more information, you can look up the United Nations for the Convention of the Rights of People with Disability, Article 24, Comment Number 4. Inclusive education is to be understood as a fundamental human right of all learners, a means of realising other human rights, for example, the primary years by which people with disabilities can lift themselves out of poverty, participate fully in their communities and be safeguarded from exploitation. The means through which we will achieve inclusive societies. So you can see how important it really is to take up this right and include it as part of your inclusive, positive vision for your child. You can see a small picture down the bottom of Marlena Katain. She says, I have a future because I was included. I have a job. 
I have a career. Better than that, I am part of my chosen community and I have many friends. So let's take a look now at a short video put together by an organisation called Imagine More. This short video is by Gina Wilson-Burns and she outlines some of the ways in which she's been able to use her positive vision for Mac to be able to be included in the school community and in particular some of the ways in which he's been able to be included in the class but also around the school and the ways in which she's been able to articulate what is important to her family and what is important to Mac. Okay, so you can see on your screen that we've got Mac's vision plan um, and at the end of the day, it isn't too different to what you'd expect for any person or any child, regardless of disability. So the things in Mac's vision, happiness, belonging, uh, to be an independent or interdependent learner, uh, to have fun, friends, family, uh, natural supports um, around him, to expect education, employment, entertainment, um, to be a valued member of his community and to follow his dreams. Um, to have ownership of his life. So they're things that we want for any child. Um, in this instance, it's just something that we have intentional, intentionally articulated. Um, we've sat down and we've discussed it as a family. We've written it down and over time we've refined it. And look, this isn't a document that we would necessarily give to people. We use this more as a framework for what information we might provide depending on the situation. But here's two quick examples of how having the vision was really important in those early years of Mac schooling with two issues that we felt were problematic but we were not really sure why. And the first one was when he was in kindergarten, um, we realised he was being taken um, with the aid when they were doing errands. So when they were going and doing photocopying for the teacher or thing, uh, other jobs for the class, Mac was being taken um, by the aid to do those with him. So thinking back to what our vision plan has, the risks to that was he was risking his membership um, in his class community, it was risking his sense of belonging, it was risking his expectation of education, of being an independent learner, it was risking building those natural supports of his peers, it was risking ordinariness, the other kids weren't doing, doing that. So you can clearly see what all the risks to the vision plan were. And that's how we were able to identify that this was a problem and approach the school and have a, have a discussion uh, before it went too far. The, mm. the next thing that was a risk to his vision plan uh, were the other students not being allowed to push Mac's wheelchair. And again, we could test it against our vision plan and see all the things that were um, taking us away from um, our vision and so it took a bit more work we had to we had to do more negotiations around this and but the upshot was we were able to develop um, far greater opportunities for Mac by ide by identifying these and and knowing why they were problematic so the next screen shows um, the good things that came from us testing these and things like we at our primary school we have a wheelchair attendant licensing program where the p children are taught how to um, you know push push Max wheelchair how it works how to identify when there's problems they um, they work with him in group work they all get taught how to use his communication devices so that he's less and less reliant on that aid in the classroom and all of this benefits their learning he's seen as a valued learner because he's not off running errands with the, with the aid. Uh, the students learn to expect that he should be in the class. We, the last couple of years at Swimming Carnivals, the students have swum with Mac, he ne wears a, a neck rim um, and they swim up the pool. There's no adult in the pool and they, two kids drag him up the pool. Um, it's safe but it was something that evolved over time um, and these are the things where the peers now have this um, great sense of responsibility uh, for Mac without it being a job, it's just what they do. At camp he shares a bunk room with the, with the other boys, they have a walkie-talkie to um, 
to buzz the adults if there's if they they think they need um, Mac needs assistance. So these are the things test the vision allows us to do is to test things against it and see whether we're staying on the right path. Here in Queensland, we're fortunate to have a policy in the Department of Education on inclusive education. You can find out more about this policy by going to the department's website. You can see here that the policy outlines the different ways in which students with a disability can be included in the school community. More importantly, the Department of Education have set up four measures of success when measuring success of the progress for students with disabilities. So the department is looking at improving the A to E performance for students with disability. They're looking at increasing the proportion of students with disability receiving a Queensland Certificate of Education. The department is looking at decreasing the proportion of students with disability receiving a school disciplinary absence. And they're looking into reducing the number of students with disability not attending a full-time program. So these are some of the measures that you can find more about on the Department of Education's website. So what helps make inclusion possible? Having high expectations, being clear and guided by your positive vision, being prepared for barriers and challenges, believing in your child and focus on their gifts, strengths, rights, and contributions. Be realistic. Teachers and schools will not always get it right. Be committed to and building a relationship with teachers, professionals, and the school community. Stay informed and connected about inclusive education. You remember the vision statement I showed you about Sean? Well, this is Sean now. Sean has two separate jobs that he really enjoys. He's moved out into a unit of his own with a housemate. And these are some of the words that Lisa would like to leave you with, thinking about and reflecting on Sean's life. To dream big, stand strong. Be wildly proud of your precious child and know that in choosing inclusion, you are making a difference, not only for your family, but for those who follow. So in closing, we would like to um, encourage you to dream big, um, focus in on the gifts and contributions that your child has to offer. Think about how you can envisage an inclusive education by thinking about them being included in school and in the richer, wider school community. There will be many benefits for them in the longer term. You can see a quote down here from, from Lisa about Sean. We want him to be welcomed and appreciated for his unique gifts and contributions. We want him to be challenged to learn in order to keep developing to his full potential. So from everyone here at the Families for Inclusive Education team, we hope that you can get connected with other families, keep learning about inclusive education through our other online opportunities, believe in your child, be their ambassador into the future and continue to dream and think about what is possible for their life. For more information, please get in touch with CREW at www.cru.org.au or by email at cru at cru.org.au. For more information about getting connected with other families who have a son or daughter with a disability, look out for the Queensland Collective for Inclusive Education. You can find them on Facebook and you can also find them at www.qcie.org. Thank you for staying with us for this short presentation. We look forward to more conversations about having a positive vision for inclusive education and other topics. If you'd like to stay up to date with um, more information about inclusive education, go to www.cru.org.au for more information about events coming up in the future. Thank you very much.